What up, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Warden here. Today we're gonna to talk about an easier way that you can do asynchronous data modeling in React, whether you're using Redux or Hooks, either one, doesn't matter. <laughs> Programming, gaming, fitness, Jesse Warden. What we're interested in is the finite state machines of rendering UIs. With asynchronous data, use results in the big three. You're loading the data, you're showing the data, or the data failed to load and you have an error state with some kind of message showing what the error actually was. And the way you typically do this in Redux is you have an object which starts with whatever your default state, which is probably loading. And so you have a Boolean flag for that. But if there's an error state, you have a Boolean flag to differentiate. If it's not really loading, it's false. And this is an error, then you're gonna show the error state. And then the error state needs to know what the error is. You can render it in the UI. And finally, for a successful state, you have to have the actual place for the data. So in this case, the foods, which is the array. And so you look at the state for your reducer and it has all these booleans and everything else, but there's an easier way to do that. So you don't have to write all these Boolean flags. And you also don't have to have the current bug, which is if we go to an error state, we forget to, when we transition to a uh, success state to actually turn the error flag off. So although we've tried to keep the code nice and simple, we're using object structuring, if you do it wrong or you don't have enough unit tests or you're just tired because you've, this is a very common pattern. You copy, paste, and messed it up. As soon as we go back to a successful state, watch what happens when I get a 200. I successfully load the data, but it shows an error. And it shows in here, we have an impossible state where it's an error of true and we actually have foods. Like what? <laughs> How did that happen? Because you didn't be very explicit when you go to each state. You have to be explicit. You have to say, we are not in an error state. We are in a loading state. We don't have either an error or foods to actually show. Same with that. So when you go to UI and you actually render those props. If you're loading state, show loading. If you're in error state, show failed. If you're neither, go ahead and show the data. Well, it still thinks it's in an error state. It's a little bit hard to debug this in an imperative looking UI, whether you're using hooks or not, it doesn't matter. And same with the reducer, you have to be very explicit and you have a lot of this stuff. So let's show you an easier way using algebraic data types, which makes this a lot less code and a lot easier. If you go to the Folktales site, click on the API, scroll down here to ADT for union types, and scroll down again to modeling data union. And finally, one more time, this time with feeling for modeling data on union type with the two parameters. Quill has a wonderful article here describing what union types are for. A lot of times, a lot of the examples are actually returning meaningful errors. So instead of throwing errors or having a promise with a catch, you can return union types to say exactly what happened. Maybe good, ill, or maybe not necessarily bad, but kind of informational. We're gonna use it to model state because you can only be in one at the other. Scholars are things like Booleans, Products are like something like objects where it has multiple properties, but we're interested in unions, which means we're either in a loading state, a success state, or an error state. And that's exactly what these things are made for. I'm gonna compare and contrast the old code with the new code. You notice on the left here, this is what we used to have, where we have a default state with a, an object, it has two Boolean flags that we turn on and off with either an error data or this data. Here, we actually have a union type, and it's just a function that we define some arbitrary name with basically types within types. So in this case, our food state can either be loading the foods, the foods are loaded, or the foods have an error. And we just destructure those names so we can literally type these functions. And that's why we put the word food in there to differentiate between these three functions here, or function types. If it's a loading state, there's no data in it, we don't really care about it. Or here, our loading state, same, if we have a loading flag true, that supersedes everything else. Foods loaded, the foods will actually be in it, the data we care about here, you have to look at these flags first, then grab this. Whereas here, you don't. It's literally foods loaded, has the foods in it. And finally, the foods error has the error we care about here. You don't have to look at the flag. You just literally go directly to the error, the actual error inside of it. Right off the bat, you can notice that reducer is very clear. Instead of like, I'm in a default state, and then you have to go inspect the object of what does that mean? Here, it's very clear. You're in the loading food state. So that's it. Like there's nothing to read. It just says it right there in the default parameter. So we know what state we start with. But more importantly, is that you don't have all these ob massive objects that you have to guarantee when you go from each particular state, you always reset everything else. Here, you don't reset anything. You can't be in two states at once. You're only one at a time. Either loading, error, or loaded, done, that's it, right? So a lot less code, a lot more clear, and it's impossible to get in an impossible state. The data we care about is actually inside of these actual functions here. 
And lastly, they have one nice property that we can do. Let's go take a look at the, the actual UI. So instead of having an if statement that may or may not have part correctly made, or if the state is actually incorrectly represented, the if statement will screw up. In our case, we just have a nice little function called match with. Every single union type gets this. And even more interesting is you don't have to import the types because these are kind of like property names. You don't even have to import them. You can just write it on this object. No need to import it and use it. And so it's a lot more clear what state we're in. There's no impossible ifs or going into a wrong state. If you're in the loading foods, show the loading. If you're in the error, show the error. If you're in loaded, show the data, right? And the great thing is, is that because they are functions, they get the data in the first and only parameter. You can destructure it. So we take the error and put it right where the error, the foods, right next to the props of the component that needs it. So it's very localized, very near what it affects. And because it's a function, a lot easier to unit test, a lot easier to stub or mock. And more importantly, this doesn't matter if you're using Redux or hooks, right? We're using both. We have Redux here for immutable data, but we also have hooks for doing normal UI stuff. So it doesn't matter which is which, it just provides a, a better way. A lot less code, right, compared to our other old reducer. It's a lot easier to read on when you're using it with function calls. We know exactly what our default state is, for example. And the code itself is a lot less verbose. You can guarantee you're never going to be in an impossible state, which is kind of cool. And from a view perspective, it's a lot less code, a lot easier to unit test, and very localized with its data rather than these if-then statements and, and you know, kind of putting that burden on the view. I have a blog post on this. If you got any, want some more details, if you go to my blog, jessewarden.com, one of the first articles is easier asynchronous state modeling in React, Redux, or Hooks. I talk all about it to give you some code examples. And the code itself is on GitHub in my repo for this. The types branch has a solution and the master has the normal object way of doing things so you can compare and contrast. And again, all these ideas were stolen from Richard Feldman's talk. If you want to learn more about how you make impossible states impossible using Elm, you can take these same concepts and apply it to Flow or TypeScript if, the, if you don't you know, want to use something like Elm, for example. And because it's strongly typed, you actually have help with the, from the compiler guaranteeing that in your reducers, you cover every single angle. You don't miss, right, like you can with an if statement, which is great. And for a little more obviousness about using these types and, and other ways of modeling them, not just for Redux, but any type of state you're trying to model, not just asynchronous, Jeremy Fairbank has a wonderful talk about solving the Boolean identity crisis. So if you want some more information, go there and check that out. Otherwise, if you've got any other questions, hit me up in the comments, hit me up on email, social media. My name is Jesse Warden, and I hope that was helpful and makes your code a lot easier to deal with in Redux when you're dealing with asynchronous state.